While AI is getting much better at creating colouring pages, you've probably come across your fair share of different errors, such as blurry lines, weird objects that don't make sense, multiple limbs, grayscale, and much more. But in this video, I'm going to share with you just a quick shortcut that you can use that not only can help you to create consistent colouring pages that would work throughout an entire book, but also to start off on the right foot by using a colouring page as a reference that already doesn't have any of these errors. I'm going to be using Mid Journey and Ideogram and you can see the difference between them. At this point, if you showed me colouring pages created by Ideogram, Bing or Mid Journey, I'm pretty sure I'd be able to identify which AI created it. And that's because they all tend to have a certain style about them. Definitely Mid Journey is the most artistic and unique, but it doesn't always lend well to colouring pages specifically. However, if you're wanting to create something that's technically more appropriate as a colouring page, then to me, Ideogram wins hands down. So first of all, I'm on Mid Journey and we want to go to the Explore tab, which is on the left hand side at the top. Then I'll put something generic in like cute colouring page. And the reason for this is because we're not looking for a specific niche. We're looking for a specific style that we're going to use as a style reference. These all look really good, but they're more like illustrations than colouring pages. In my opinion, you do see a lot of books still that have this kind of design, as you can see here. They're not suited for colouring in. But we want to look for something that does have really defined lines and doesn't have very much grayscale. As you can see, the hands are a bit wrong and she has three legs, so that's not good. So I like this one. It's pretty good. It's got most of the clear outlines there. It's got a couple of things you could probably delete. But let's just say we really like the style of this particular bird. What we're going to do is use this as an image reference. So go down to the bottom right hand corner, click image, and then we've got three options that come up here. So there are three types of image reference that you could use. The one we're interested in when trying to replicate a certain style or create consistency between colouring pages is the style reference. And that's this one in the middle that looks like a paperclip. The one on the far left is the character reference. And that's going to be important if, say, we wanted this very specific bird into the next image that we're creating. And the image reference is a bit more vague. You can use it in different ways. but Unless we wanted to keep a lot of the structure of this particular image, then we wouldn't want to use that. We are only interested in creating something in this style, not necessarily anything related to this image. So, for example, we could create an octopus in the sea with using this style. It doesn't have to have any of the same details in it. So if we go to the right hand side, we could also click on the text. What I actually tend to do is use my own prompt, just a really simple prompt such as colouring page, raw character. Okay, let's try this first of all. So I'm just going to press enter on that. So the original prompt is here, cartoon image, spring flower, simple line art. So we could do, instead of spring flower, obviously we could have frog, simple line art, and then we'll just keep the original image as a star reference and go for that. This is what it's come up with with our frog. So you can see that it's really very similar to the original design that we wanted. And some of these are good. I really like the, the style of this. There are a couple of errors in it, but what we could do is just keep rerunning it until it's something that we want. Okay, so using the original prompt as well with the image, create something quite different. In fact, sort of less similar in a way in style wise than the original one, even though we used our own prompt. But I like to do that both ways using the prompt that's there and also that's adapted and then my own prompt just to give variety of results. So this is very simple. Obviously, you'd have to edit out this particular leaf, which is simple to do with something like AI tools in Canva, where you can delete elements. And we're going to use this prompt this time. So simple coloring page of a sleeping lion. So with this one, you can see it's very much like that style of the initial hedgehog but with a different character. So this is Ideogram, and as you can see, it looks very much like Mid Journey Alpha. I'm really new to Ideogram, but I really like it for colouring pages, but the style on Mid Journey is completely different. It is much more suited to things like illustrations, in my opinion. So on Ideogram, in much the same way, you would go to the search bar and just search for something like colouring page for kids. 
And as you can see already, the lines are just much more defined and a lot of these images are good to go. And also you can create colouring pages with text in them and the text is correct. Unlike still on Mid Journey, that can be hit and miss. So we're just going to choose something simple. Let's go for this, this cute deer. So what we can do now is if we look on the right hand side, we can use this as a style reference. So specifically, we've done this because we want a colouring page that relates in some way to this style, but also hoping that because the AI has achieved this with this image, that we're going to get a really clear and well-defined image from using this particular one as a style reference. So let's just have a go. We're going to use the original prompt, which we've edited, and then we're also going to use our own simple prompt and see what the difference is and then I'm also going to use the prompt on its own without the style reference because that can still come up with a good result as well. So let's do a cute cute octopus with bendy tentacles. Okay we're just going to keep the rest as it is and we will generate that and then we will do the others at the same time. So use it as a star reference again and this time we're just going to put in our own simple prompt, simple colouring page of a cute octopus and then we're going to use just the prompt, the original prompt on its own by editing out the details but keeping everything else as it is. I'm just going to delete the image. Okay so let's see how this has worked. Okay, so this has worked really well. So the first image that we've got is very much in a similar style to the deer. So it would look, wouldn't look out of place in a colouring book with that other image. And this one was just the style reference of the original image. Plus we've used the prompt that originally came with that image too, and then just edited out some of the details. So the other version next was our own very simple prompt with the style reference. So it created more of a complicated image, if you like, but still good. The final one was just using the prompt without the image and that worked pretty well as well. I'm gonna go for cute coloring page now. Okay, okay, so let's go for this giraffe. Style reference, say a cute hippo. Full body flower and so on. Let's go for the flower as well. Let's just do it the same and generate. Just go for the prompt on its own and then also do the one with just a simple prompt. Colouring page, hippo, flower in its mouth. Okay, let's have a look at these. Okay, so again, all of these could be used really. This was just the prompt without any image reference at all. This one was the one with the original prompt and the image reference. And this is much closer to that original image. And then the last one was just the very simple prompt and our image. And you can see this one's a little bit different because I didn't give that many details in that actual prompt. So it's added some additional stuff. So as you can see, it's really easy to create images on ideogram that are in a similar style really easily just using that style reference option. And I do think that in general, the images are much more suited to colouring than in Mid Journey with much less that you need to edit out. What I just tend to do after that would be to upscale the image. Instead of upscaling, you can use a tool like Tangent Crystal, which is something that I frequently use if I'm using colouring pages from Mid Journey or from Ideogram. The tool removes not only grayscale, but also transforms the image into an SVG. So it gets rid of all of these kind of light blurry lines and turns it into an SVG, which means you don't need to upscale the image. But this tool comes as part of a bundle for the Imagine course, specifically is focused on Mid Journey. So this is inside the course and Tangent Crystal is here at the top. Top. So you just log into that and then you just upload here any images that you want and then you would go to edit. This is already turned into an SVG. You can change the brightness. So we're going to go a little bit darker, not too dark. And you can also change the amount of details that are in, in the image. Also, there is an eraser tool. In this particular case, there's really nothing that I need to delete. But if you did need to delete something, there is an eraser tool. I would now always download as an F SVG. But beforehand, I always make sure that I don't need to make any more edits because once you're in Canva, you can't use the AI tools on an SVG. So just as another quick tip as well, if you wanted to save time, instead of editing all of these prompts individually yourself, 
what you could do is copy this particular prompt, head over to ChatGBT and ask ChatGBT to use this prompt as a reference and create additional prompts with different themes. And then you could specify the particular niche or certain pages that you want. And then you can just copy and paste those prompts going through this one at a time. It's quite time consuming. And I have done it both ways, but using ChatGPT is a lot faster. So let me know if there are any other videos you'd like me to do on this topic or if there are any particular problems that you get stuck with when it comes to creating coloring books using AI and AI coloring pages and I'll do my very best to help you out. But that is all for today so thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you again very soon.